So good morning, good afternoon um, for everyone um, here today, wherever you are. It might be morning still, might might be afternoon where you are. Um, thanks for being here. Um, today I'm going to take our topic, um, working with trades that either go wrong or trading around positions. So um, this is a big topic, and this is a topic, it's one of my favorite things to do in the market um, um, making money from a stock and never owning it love that um, owning a stock and making more money from it um, by um, trading around it um, being able to reduce risk on trades by trading around a position and so to kick this off, one of the first things I want to talk about here really quickly is that options were never intended for speculation trading. That was never their intention. Um, the purpose of options was to hedge and reduce risk on trades. And we've turned them into a speculation item. Um, so, I mean, it, it's like a giant casino anymore in um, the options trading market. But there are there's some major power in understanding how options can really help you um, improve your trading, enhance profits, or even reduce potential risks in a trade. So first off, let's talk just a little bit about a Delta. For those of you that aren't all that familiar with um, Delta, um, and I always start with, with a stock. If, if you own a stock position, okay, um, you, you have one Delta for every share you own, okay? So if you own 100 shares of a stock, you have 100 deltas, which means that for every dollar that those stock moves moves up, you're going to gain a dollar per share. Okay, um, because you are at 100 deltas, right? When we take a look at options, we know that we typically buy options um, that aren't 100 deltas. Those are too deep in the money. They're, well, first off, it's hard. You, you just about can't find a 100 delta option. And when you do, the bid ask spread is crazy and you don't want to trade it. But delta gives us that ability to manage trades. So let's say, for an example, if I were looking at a trade and I owned um, you know, one contract <clears throat> of you know, XYZ, doesn't matter what it is. Um, I own one contract in that trade and I bought it at somewhere around 70 deltas and now it, it has moved up into that 80 delta range in the trade. And this is a positive delta position. Okay, so I own one long call on that position. It's now 80 deltas. How can I reduce my risk on that trade? Well, I can do something simple like picking up some negative delta in a trade. So for example, one of the, one of the um, most conservative option strategies out there is the covered call. And I trade a lot of cover calls. And I trade in and out of them all the time. Okay. And in those positions, if you have a negative delta uh, position, and let's say I pick up 30 negative deltas on a trade, I have reduced my long exposure. Okay. I now have a 50 delta long exposure to the market. So what that means is that if the stock were to continue to move up, I'm only gonna make 50 cents for every dollar. But it also says, if I move down in this, 
the 30 deltas are working for me, so my potential loss on my 80 delta position has been diminished. I'm only going to lose 50 cents per dollar if it moves down, and this will be making me money. So understanding the power of options and how you can use them to hedge positions and do things sets up all of these different strategies that you've probably heard about and but maybe not truly understand. Um, 2021, excuse me, 2022. When I talked to most people about 2022, they absolutely hated it. And 2022 just sucked for them. Uh, the market was moving down. They, they don't really know too much about how to handle that. Um, but the reason I'm bringing this up, and this isn't to brag or anything like that, but I almost made a record return on my portfolio. Um, it was just short by a few percentage points of making my all-time record high return in 2022. And it's because I understand the power of options and understand the power of trading around a position to take profits on trades. So I never actually have to own it. I can trade around it and make money. So for example, I have a, a position, and this is just a paper position, it was an example, in PFE. And this position expires tomorrow. Okay, And even though the stock has pulled back since this position went on, where is it recorded? I've got the drawings here someplace. I don't know where. I... Maybe I deleted them off. I don't know. But um, long story short, uh, PFE is going to expire tomorrow with a 100% profit. I don't own PFE. What I'm doing is taking advantage of the theta decay of options. And that's another truth. Oh, maybe I've got it. There it is. This is where it is. And although this is pulling back toward the short strike, this is going to expire at 100% profit. Okay, because theta is drained out of these positions. Okay. And all I did was took this really big low and said, what if we take a shot of this just rallying to the upside? We don't actually have to own Pfizer. We just look at the rally to the upside potential and make a 100% return on a trade. Okay, Because we're working for the theta in the position, and it means that we're trading around the trade. Okay. We did the same thing with an Apple position, closing an Apple position for a, um, right at about 100% returns, like 97, 98, and it was up here. This was the short strike. This was the long strike, and we ended up closing this trade because we just faded away. We let resistance do the job in the trade to push this stock down on Apple. And we use the same thing. We use support in the Pfizer trade to make money from that while it rallies up. And we never own the position. So that might give you some ideas on, on why 2022 was so powerful for me because we had big moves in the market in 2022. And all I did, I, I, I didn't hold many directional positions. I held premium collection positions, okay, that I could get farther away from the money on and collect profits. We did that recently with the diamonds trade and I ended up taking a, out of it, averaged altogether, it was about a 45% return on a diamonds spread condition when this market pulled back. Okay, and that's all it was. It's just really simple trading around positions where we can manage those deltas and be able to bring in money. 
on trades. Is there anyone here interested in that? Because I know I know when I start talking about this kind of stuff, people's eyes glaze over. That's too complicated for me. I, I can't do that. Um, um, but honestly, it's not all that complicated. Okay, It's really, really simple when you think about if we use big support and resistance levels in the chart, how we can trade around a position and continue to bring money in on a trade. Now, at the same time, if we do own a position, we can use these trades around the position to enhance profits or to reduce the stop loss of a trade. I've made no secret um, about uh, me wanting to own a longer term position here in UNG. Okay, and I'm holding this position even though it's pulling back. Okay, and the 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 300 shares that I own of UNG, I bought it as a stock because I want to hold it long term. The 300 shares that I bought as a stock are below water. I'm losing money on the stock. Okay. But would you guys believe I'm almost even in price on UNG? Because I have managed the risk in UNG, I am almost dead flat overall. As a matter of fact, my year to date on UNG is positive. Okay, because we flipped over to the new year and I'm holding some short calls on UNG. I sold the eight strike calls against this position and they are going to expire at a 100% return. So while my stock position is still struggling here, I'm basically flat in my account on UNG because I'm managing these positions and actually bringing money into my account even as the stock is losing money. Okay? So understanding how to utilize these trades, and I can't, I honestly, in an hour time frame, this is a bigger subject than that, but understanding how to do these things can make a world of difference in the profits of your trading. I didn't trade very many positions last year because it was just, this last year was pretty darn crummy. But at the end of the year, I still beat my 20% per year goal because of the money I captured in the market by trading around positions and hedging positions that I own. Okay. To me, it is such a powerful skill to be able to look at the market and see it completely different than just the simple directional up and down moves. Because when we look at a chart, we typically look at it, it's either moving up or it's moving down, and we don't see anything else. Okay. Which, which, what you guys need to understand is that there is far more time in every stock that stock is not going up or going down, it's going sideways. And we can make money from that. That's how I made money in the diamonds. If you guys watched any of my morning market prep videos, I said heading in to the next year, coming into earnings, it's pretty common that the market gets range bound and consolidates. So I put on a trade to take advantage of that. I think it was like the sixth or seventh, I took the final position off on that diamonds position. Now, I told everybody when I took it, I was taking a large trade. 
Okay, and I'm only giving you this number. Remember, I said the percentage was probably around 45% overall on that position, but I made over $7,000. Never owned the stock. Utilize the sideways move in the market to profit on the diamonds. Now, when you can do that kind of thing, when you can see those resistance levels and those support levels in a chart, you have an opportunity to manage around those positions. So take a look at MU. I suggested an entry into MU the other day. It popped up here. We got into the trade. Let me show you my drawings. We got into the trade. It pulled back yesterday, this morning. It gapped up. And now it's pulling back just a little bit with the softness that we're seeing in the market. As I started talking, we market started pulling back again, this choppy area. But we're still in a bullish pattern in this chart. I put a line up here. If you notice that line up there, what I would do is if I sold a covered call against this trade, I would turn that red to remind me that I have a covered call. So if MU were to continue moving higher, I have plenty of time with 60 plus days. I think, um, let me look real quick. I think it's he had some March contracts. So I have 57 days on, on that trade in March. If that rallied up and shot up here toward this resistance, the next thing I would do if I wanted to hold the trade and not just take profits, I would sell calls above that resistance. Because what typically happens after a market moves up or a stock moves up? A stock moves up, the most common patterns in the market that you will ever find is the peak and valley pattern. So we move up and then we rest or pull back or consolidate. Okay, So in this move, when this pushes up, then I sell the covered calls against that position, just expecting this to do what most stocks do, then rest or consolidate and pull back and this is making me money while I'm still holding this trade. So I'm able to make money from both sides of that position. And if it holds in here bullishly and starts up, I close this, take the profit, continue to hold the long position for more upside in the trade. Being able to manage around a position makes a big difference in your trade okay um, well first off um, if I own the position okay if I own long calls or if I own stock when I sell the calls up here I'm not uncovered and they're not naked Okay. So I don't have a naked position when I trade. And I would really recommend to anyone listening to me, unless you're extremely experienced and you have lots of capital available, never sell naked calls. That's, that's a game for the institutions. It's really not a good practice for most retail traders. There's too much risk. It requires massive amounts of margin to do that. So you're not naked if you own the position. Now, one of the questions that comes up, well, I bought MU, but I don't have a full position, meaning I bought the stock and I only have 50 shares of the trade. If I sell a, 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 a contract against that, then I've got 50 shares naked. Okay. I don't do that either. In that circumstance, rather than a naked call situation, I would do a bear call credit spread where I have a long strike and a short strike on that trade to hedge that 50 share position. Or I would even use a ratio spread trade.
Yeah, if um, Bio John, um, if you're in any kind of a qualified account, you're not allowed to sell naked. Uh, the broker will prevent you. If you're in any IRA, traditional IRA or SAP or anything like that, um, you cannot sell naked calls. They won't let you. It's against the, it's against the rules. Uh, government knows better how to manage your money than you do, obviously. So they tell you what you can and can't do. But <clears throat> that being said, you still don't want to have that naked risk out there in the market if you can prevent it. Okay. <clears throat> now, the other thing is true here, guys. When a stock pulls back, let's take this UNG, and this stock pulls back. If the stock were to find support in here, could I also take advantage of this move by trading around this trade for an upside? Yeah, I sure can, right? Because I could sell calls up here. I could sell puts down here. And if that pullback in here catches support and rallies back up, these puts are going to expire in my favor. And I just added more profit to my trade. Or I could do a bull put credit spread and do the same thing. Or I could do a ratio, back ratio spread trade and do the same thing. Profit from the trade on every move that it makes. You know, a few years back, <clears throat> I know Mike Peterson's here and he's going to he's going to post a statement that I was just taking advantage of a of an old man, I think is what he says. Um he he challenged me one day to um buy a position in UAA and hold it till it doubled and I said, "Okay." Deal. and it was just 10 shares buy it and hold it and it was somewhere back over here I'd have to go back more than it was back over in the, um, in here someplace okay actually further than that let me go two days it was back in here he challenged me he says buy 10 should be ashamed of himself <laughs> buy 10 shares and hold it till it doubles I said okay the stock was going down when I bought it. This stock never ended up coming back into doubling. And the bet was, you know, if I did that, he would go buy a new cell phone. He would buy, buy a smartphone instead of the one that he was holding together with um, duct tape. And that's no joke. But... Um, he ended up buying a smartphone, and and I continued to hold this. Now, with 10 shares, would you guys believe, but by the time I closed this trade, 10 shares trading options around it, I made over $7,000 on 10 shares. Okay. Because what happened right in here, I was holding 10 shares of this stock and this stock started to set up here. Guess what I did? I bought call options. And then I sold covered calls. And I just kept doing that and made seven grand on 10 shares because I traded around that position. Okay. How many of you guys have ever thought about this? Well, show of hands. How many of you have ever looked at a stock and say, man, this thing is, this thing's oversold. It should start to go up from here, but it's so risky and it costs so much money. I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to take that much risk. And then you look back few months later or even a year later and say ah, I was right look at how much money I could have made how many of you guys have done that 
In fact, how many of you would willing to admit you've done it over and over and over? You were right. But you didn't have the tools to trade it. You left all that money on the table because you didn't have the knowledge or the tools to trade around the position. Okay, so think about this for a second. I'm watching international paper and I'm looking at international paper. It's an old, boring company. And I'm watching it on this weekly pattern. Anybody see this nice bullish pattern setting up here? Breaking that downtrend, holding support in here. This is actually setting up as a weekly rounded bottom breakout. <clears throat> no, I love trades like this because they're old, boring. They don't require a whole lot of time to watch or pay attention to. And it's not quite ready to buy because we're not over here at trend yet. We may have to rest some more in that chart. It's not quite ready yet. But we look at something like that and then we miss out because it moves and we don't see it. There's a real simple way to fix that, guys. Buy one share. Buy one share of the stock. It doesn't cost you much money. First off, another show of hands. How many of you in your accounts have a ton of cash that never does anything? It's never in use because you don't feel comfortable holding that much money in the market. You got a ton of cash in your account. Can you afford to buy one share? So that stock is always on your radar screen. It's staying in your account. You're watching it. You don't miss it anymore. Buy one share. Or what if you set some kind of a bull put credit spread or a ratio spread on the daily chart that gets you way out of the money here on this trade just with the idea that this is developing to the upside and it will probably eventually start moving up and you can profit from it. Now, I personally utilize the small stock position a lot. I tell people I'm nibbling in to a trade. I will buy a small position and then I'll mark up the chart and even place alerts and I'm waiting. It's in my account, so it's always on my radar screen. And then I can place credit spreads, ratio spread trades. I can buy long calls, long puts. And when that trade is actually ready to go, I'm there and I'm ready for it. I can load up on that position and continue to trade around the trade to reduce the risk. I don't know if Goodson's here today. <clears throat> Goodson <clears throat> learned this idea from me, a trading around a position. Goodson owned a pretty sizable position in NIO back over here. And selling positions around NIO he actually paid off his entire cost of the stock, meaning that everything he had paid for the stock had completely been paid for by the premium that he collected on that trade around the position. In fact, it was negative. He had completely paid off the entire cost of owning that stock by utilizing cover calls and trading options around that position. It was a free trade. 
Somebody else's money paid for it. Okay. Now I know these are a little bit more advanced strategies and I know there's folks in here, anybody in here right now going, oh crap, my head's going to, it's hurting. I, I know when I first started learning this, it, it was a struggle for me as well. It's, it's normal. Don't feel bad about that. But I can teach you how to do that, where you can take years or periods of time in the market that are largely pretty crummy and still be making money, still be putting capital into your account by understanding the use of options and trading around those trades. And you'll never again miss one of those really big upside moves. Because you can buy that small stock position, keep it on your radar, waiting for it to develop, and then pop. You're into that trade. And you might even be able, as a matter of fact, with UNG, if this keeps up with what's going in UNG, my entire cost of getting into this trade is getting closer and closer to zero because of the covered calls that I have sold against this. This is going to be the fourth, fourth or maybe the fifth set of covered calls that I have taken on this that are gonna expire worthless, meaning that I made 100% of the premium on the trade and I'm paying down my cost of the stock. Think about this guys, if, if the cost of your stock is right here let's just call it five dollars you paid five dollars for the stock if you can sell out of the money options against this and for one month pick up 30 cents and now you owe 470 on the stock and just keep doing that pretty soon your stock is free when you continue to trade around that position. Okay? And then you don't have to fear. Like, I'm not afraid of this. I've got a, my position is 300 shares. That may be bigger than some folks would be comfortable holding as, as a small position. But my position is 300 shares. If this suddenly completely tanked, I'm not going to panic about that because I know natural gas isn't going away. And I've paid off so much of my stock already that it's really no big, a big concern. In fact, that big sell-off may open up an opportunity for me to buy more. Trade. Now, I probably wouldn't buy it at the bottom. I would buy it at a higher low. Okay. That's what I'm waiting for here is to see if I can get a higher low to maybe buy some more. So I can pick up the premium on those trades. But guys, I got to tell you, and, and, and if there's anything that I can impart, if there's any questions on this, please ask. But you'll never look at the market the same way if you understand how to use the true power of options more than just the directional trading. There's nothing wrong with just trading long calls and long puts. But long calls and long puts in a volatile market or an uncertain market like we're dealing with right now with these big point moves requires quite a bit of risk. I can trade trades that have far less risk and I'm so far removed from the trade that I can deal with the volatility, the back and forth swings. It doesn't really bother me or affect me. Yeah, my stock position on UNG, I'm down 300, I'm giving you the exact numbers. 
my stock position, I'm down $377 on it. Okay, my total profits on UNG so far is $299 at this, this second. I've made $299 so far on a $378 loss on the trade. So I'm close to flat on the position because I know how to manage the risk utilizing the true power of options. Now, let's take this just to put a different slant on it. How many of you would like to have a way of reducing your risk? And that's all you're trying to do, not really make any more money on a trade, but reduce your risk to your stop loss. Okay. I don't sell naked calls, Nancy. No, I don't sell naked calls. I don't double up. So my 300 shares, I've got three contracts short. I'm not real sure, Slim. I, and people ask questions like that, and I never know until I see the price action. But I, I don't, I'm not scared of a reverse split. What I would like to do is probably close my short calls, take my profits on my short calls ahead of the reverse split just for the complication of it, because you'll end up with these calls that are kind of funky because of the reverse split. But let's think about my 300 shares on this. The day after the reverse split, I'm going to own one share for every four. So I'm going to be less than 100 shares on the reverse split when this happens. Okay, so if I want to do any more covered call selling, it'll just be, I'll have 74 shares, 75 shares at four times the price. So my equity value on the shares is the same. Okay. It's even possible if I could catch a little bit of a bounce in here on the higher low before the reverse spread, I may buy 100 shares so that I can bring that up to 400 because I know the reverse split is coming. Then when the reverse split, split happens, I have 400, or I mean 100 shares of the position and I'm good to go. But either way, I can buy 25 more shares or whatever it is, it, it doesn't matter. It's not that big a deal. It's not, don't get worked up about a reverse split. If you know it's coming, you can plan for it, prepare for it. It, it doesn't change your cash equity position in the trade. Carmen, yes, I probably, well, I will have to, I will want to, um, if I'm going to hedge around it with covered calls, because I don't, I don't trade any naked positions. Okay. But let's take Let's just do a little quick math here, guys. And this is really, really simple. For those of you that just like trading directional long calls and long puts, all right, we know if we have a 70 delta long position and the stock moves down $1, okay, $1 stock move, we are going to lose 70 cents, right? We know that's going to occur. Okay. And let's say we picked up a trade. It's looking good. It's moved up for us here a little bit. We're in that 70, 
70 delta option. We're approaching another resistance in the stock. Well, we think this is looking good. And how many of you guys lately have been trading options directionally long and you've got a nice profit and then a one day move on one black candle after a nice profit and all the all the money that you made is gone even though it's it's nowhere close to being back to where you bought it all the money's out of it right by waiting for that black candle you turn a nice winning position into a loser if you close the trade Um, it's been in the news, Carmen. Um, I know there's a lot of people that just think you, you don't have to pay attention to news, but um, I personally think you're handicapping yourself if you don't. So Roger is saying, yeah, all of a sudden the money is gone on a trade. Well, if this moves up and I sell an out of the money option, short call option on this trade that's 30 deltas, okay, and the stock pulls back, I sold a 30 delta option here that's negative, that's actually going to make money if the stock pulls back. And I have my stop loss in here someplace. I'm trying to protect some profit on the trade. It pulls back so much, there's really no money left in it. But with this short call, I still take a profit on the trade. If I stop out, let's say I had a stop out, it was going to be minus 100 bucks. And the stop out, this is going to reduce it. I'm going to lose $70. Okay, so knowing how to trade around these positions not only helps you enhance profits, but it can help you reduce your losses, stop loss, by knowing how to use them, knowing how to manage them, okay? Uh, Biojohn, I, I do that as well, but I need a technically correct pattern. Um, let me ask this question. How many of you guys have ever ever had that conclusion that, well, it can't go lower, and you buy a position in it, and it just keeps going lower? Right? Don't ever assume that you know a trend is going to be a trend until the trend shows itself. Now, having said that, If UNG shows me a higher low in here and shows me bullishness, I would really prefer it up here, to be honest. Get back up here, hold, then do a long-term position on it because this is a big resistance level in the chart. But that being said, if I have a technically correct pattern that's breaking a downtrend, Take international paper here on the weekly. Breaking this really long downtrend and holding a higher low, we're in a rounded bottom weekly pattern here. This is a technically correct setup. Buying a long-term leap option, awesome. And I do that from time to time. Okay. where I go all the way out to January 2025 or even January 2026 
and pick up a long-term option and hedge around it, selling short-term options against it during that entire period of time. And as a matter of fact, we did one in RWO, um, and we just tracked every single part of the trade um, in Microsoft, and it was way back here. Somewhere in this period. I can't remember when it was, but we bought a, um, a leap option, a long-term option on a bullish breakout, a, a bullish chart pattern. And we were in it for a good year, or not quite a year, I should say. It was like nine months, I think. We ended up making 101% on the trade. And, you know, the cool thing is, guys, when you do this stuff, you don't have to chase every stock. You don't have to trade everything. You can trade a small list of stocks and just continue to make money on them. You don't have to have giant positions to do this. You don't even need to have a great big giant account to do this. Okay, let's take for example Apple here today. Apple got a big upgrade, and I'm going to have to hurry because I got to do this quick. Big upgrade today popping up here in the chart. But would you guys agree that this area up here? Pretty substantial resistance in, in Apple. They got an upgrade today, but they've got four quarters of declining sales, and they're not looking at good sales this quarter. Okay. So could we make money from this? It's going to report on 2-1. That doesn't give us much time. For a trade like this to work, I would rather prefer, I'd prefer that this was a bit more time on this. But let me show you what I'm talking about. I can go over to Apple. Looking at these contracts here in the February contract, there's only 29 days left. And I come out here and I get even really nutty here. Let's see, I want to be above, yeah, I could go above 200. I could come over here and look at this 200 contract, sell a couple of these, buy three of these, and bring in a dollar forty-five credit. Do you guys think there's a pretty good chance that Apple will be below 200 in the next 29 days? Pretty high probability. Okay, let me show you how high a probability. If I take that trade and put it over onto the Analyze tab, and we look at this trade, okay, all we want the stock to do is stay below 200. 200 is right here. Right there. Here's the current stock price. Go to the February contracts. Right now, the Analyze tab says there's an 80% probability this trade will win. 80% probability. In fact, you take a look at a one standard deviation move. This is one standard deviation to the downside, one standard deviation to the upside. It barely comes back past my break even point on the trade. Extremely high probability. Okay. Let's take a look at this trade another way. We want to do the same kind of thing, but we're just, we're so, we, re, we really love Apple. We, we think Apple is only going to go up. It can never go down. And so we want to trade this the other way to the downside. 
um, <clears throat> I mean to the upside. So what if we come over here to the put strikes? Anybody think there's a pretty high probability Apple will be above 175 in 29 days? <clears throat> pretty high probability. I can do that exact same trade here. I can sell two of these, buy three of these, pick up a dollar eighteen in credit, which means, by the way, guys, that means that money immediately comes into my account. I'm bringing money into my account when I put this trade on. Okay, if I analyze this position on Apple. Got to move my slices out of the way here. That trade has an 83%, almost an 83.5% chance of being a winner. Max profit. Notice the one standard deviation on this move barely has a chance of being down here below my my max profit area of the trade. It doesn't even come to my break even point. Now understanding these trades guys means that you can make money on something like this, never own the stock, and actually put yourself in a position where you're making putting on a trade that has a higher probability of winning than any directional trade you ever take. Now, think about that, guys. I showed two trades on the same stock, one bullish, one bearish. Okay? Both of them making more than $100 in the next 29 days. Okay, now think about this for a second. How many hundred dollar wins over the course of a month do you really need? And I usually like to find those trades that are 200 to 500. Um, and I will double up and triple up on these trades sometimes to, to get that money up there for me. But we all have this excess, excess cash in our accounts that we're not using. If we can utilize just a small portion of it, trading a few of these, and over the course of the month make an extra grand, would that make a difference to you guys? Two to three of these trades every week can get you close to $1,000 profit. You never own the stock and you have extremely high probability trades. That's how I don't have to trade very much and I can still make really good returns in my account. As I manage around positions, I trade around positions to bring money consistently into my account, whether it be with covered calls, credit spreads, ratio spreads, whatever it is, however it sets up to bring that money into the account, never own the directional trade, still make money. So I hope you guys got something out of this. I know this was really quick and I know this was a lot of information. Um, it's not fair be because each one of these subjects, you know, a good covered call class is going to be an hour and a half, two hours. You know, uh, um, I can do credit spread classes, two hours on credit spread classes for a week, and then I still get questions on credit spread classes to lay them out, set them up properly, that kind of thing. So it wasn't fair to just make you try to drink from a fire hose, but I wanted to give you I wanted to give you a lot of ideas here to show you that there is far more ways to make money in the market than just owning a directional trade. 
There's nothing wrong with directional trading. I love it. Okay. But in markets like this, where we've got all this volatility and uncertainty and big point swings, I don't have to address it. I don't have to deal with it. I still make money. Okay. And I don't know about you guys, but I had on one large trade. Now, one large trade percentages are the same okay made me a huge return i didn't have to trade a lot i didn't have to trade everything moving i didn't have to chase or rush or hurry and i made goal type of money in one trade think about that this can be useful to you ask me some questions glad to help we teach this stuff every day in RWO so um, take a trial ask some questions see if it is for you but hopefully this was helpful I want to wish you guys all of the best this afternoon thanks guys take care